So here we go. I'm going to be um, just giving information that is related to the weather events that are occurring right now that have occurred that have occurred for um, a very, very long time. Our weather is completely controlled. This is in Ohio. John, here in Linden, Lilybrook Road is one of many roads that were washed out, one of the more significant ones. Crews have spent the day today replacing the dirt that was washed away by last night's rain. Strong thunderstorms dumped nearly two and a half inches of rain on parts of Caledonia and Washington County. All of that water rushed through the rivers and streams, backing up over roadways and washing out culverts. In Marshfield, Fields could be seen flooded from the nearby Winooski River. One home's driveway was cut off by the fast-moving waters. St. John's Bay residents were cut off Monday morning after the Sleepers River spilled onto nearby Emerson Falls Road. Since then, the water has fallen back within its banks. And in Linden, the east branch of the Pasumpsic River flowed onto Route 122, blocking it off temporarily. While on Lilybrook Road, trees and mud clogged up the culvert pipe underneath the road, forcing the stream up and over the dirt road, destroying it. Destroying it. Rain now destroys roads all over. All over. Lake Ontario. Governor Cuomo goes back to Alcott and issues an emergency order. Get ready, guys. Meanwhile, flooding is on the mind of Governor Cuomo. For the second time in two weeks, he came to Olcott, Niagara County, to update residents on what steps the state is taking to curb flooding should it happen as expected. Channel 2's Dave McKinley was there. Well, Kate, when Governor Cuomo came back to Alka today, he announced that he was signing an emergency order. Now, that'll do a few things. The first, uh, in regard to some of the boats you see coming in and out of Alcott Harbor, it sets a five mile per hour speed limit all the way a thousand feet from shore. That is designed, of course, to cut down on the wake and keep it from lapping onto the properties amid these already high lake levels. The second thing it will do is allow the state to bypass normal procurement policies when it comes to their need to purchase flood fighting materials. And that could be anything from additional rock they may need to bring in and build up berms, uh, sandbags, of course, you see some of those there. And of course, something we told you about before, these aqua dams, I'd like to purchase more of them and purchase them fast. And the other thing the emergency declaration will do is send a couple of hundred more National Guard troops to shoreline areas along Lake Ontario. In all good day, McKinley Channel. All right, so uh, the governor is doing this because he knows that flooding is on its way to you guys in New York. Our first uh, possible hurricane two weeks before hurricane season starts. And they're claiming that, well, it's uh, if it develops into a tropical storm, the name will be Andrea. Andrea. All right. Um, Andrea seems to uh, have quite a bit of high frequency heating going on, don't you think? Yes, she does. All right, let's take a look at uh, Atlantic wide. There is Andrea. And there is an awful lot of high frequency heating taking place in all of the storms that are going on from Texas, Oklahoma, uh, it, uh, Arkansas, you have been very lucky, uh, though it could dip down south, uh, but Missouri and Kansas, uh, wow, they're, I don't know what the number is now, tornadoes since Saturday, 50. 50 tornadoes, but look at Andrea. Oh, Andrea. They're trying to create Andrea for you. But they did say National Weather Service, uh, that authority regarding weather, said that 
they don't believe that it's going to develop uh, into anything that will be threatening because it'll hit a cold front um, and then the hurricane will devolve. Devolve. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting uh, language they use. Is it on radar? Let's check out radar. Let's check out radar. Oh, come on. Well, lovely computer, right? No, it's not. Oh, thank you. Okay. No, it does not seem to be on radar, but, well, maybe, maybe it's just beyond the screen there. So let's check out another site. College of DuPage. Oh, okay, it's on satellite. College of DuPage. Well, let's go to radar. No, nowhere in sight. Another manufactured storm. That radar, well, if they finally get it going, that's when it will appear on radar. Of course, yes. We uh, I've been capturing a lot of the storm and high frequency heating. It's it's so manufactured. Uh, I have interesting. Whatever's going on in Nevada, I don't know. But a lot of crossing beams that, well, it just doesn't portend good news. And we've got microwaves hitting this storm. I remember earlier I thought it was on its way out of Oklahoma, but it seems to have been elongated. Yeah. Well, we are in the midst of a war. It's called a weather war. And it's very real and people are suffering the consequences of that war. So, New York prepare. Um, well, if it hits a cold front, if they get it going, if it hits a cold front, then no. Well, interesting how we've got a lot of waves in this ocean. Well, it could be the frequencies in use. Now, Okay, uh, Pennsylvania today posted at 8.16 p.m. Severe storms cause injuries, home damage, road closures in eastern Lancaster County. Okay, uh, well, let's head on north. Look at this. You know, All of the damage that we are seeing, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't believe that this is tornadoes. I think these are microbursts or look at all the down trees, uprooted, all of these uprooted trees. Now, wh wh how come the leaves on the trees look intact? But all of the trees are uprooted and roof damage. Look at this. The trees are full, but they're all uprooted. Very strange damage we are seeing. So, um, 
well, yeah, millions of gallons of sewage spills into Niagara River. Oh, well. This is just, uh, this is all part of the destruction, guys. You know, this is deliberate. Um, they're, they're destroying every river. Uh, they're polluting waterways all over the place and bringing about a lot of weather damage. I will link below. You guys in Niagara Falls, New York, heavy rains pushed more than 19 million gallons of raw and partially treated sewage and stormwater into the Niagara River at the Rainbow Bridge late last week. Uh, how many times have we heard this occurring around the country? Often, actually. Somehow, these storms, these rains, they're up. Uh, they're uprooting trees, they're uh, destroying bridges and levees and, and uh, dams, sewage treatment plants. Well, they just can't contain the sewage. Flooding now just doesn't seem to want to recede liquefaction. Liquefaction occurs when vibrations or water pressure within a mass of soil cause the soil particles to lose to lose contact with one another. As a result, the soil behaves like a liquid as an inability to support weight and can flow down very gentle slopes. This condition is usually temporary and is most often caused by an earthquake, vibrating water, saturated fill, or unconsolidated soil. Yes, liquefaction can occur when three conditions are met. Loose granule sed sediment or fill, saturation by groundwater, strong shaking. So, there's an awful lot of saturation taking place. There's a lot of extremely low frequencies shaking the ground. And that could be, it could be, um, well, one of the reasons why we're seeing these trees just uproot themselves. I don't know. I don't know. This looks like a no, it's the same video. Um, but look at the roots. Oh, what roots? There are no roots on these trees. That's what is really disturbing. So between the saturation, all of the chemicals, they are spraying heavy metals, coming down into the tree's root system, uh, destroying their roots, uh, weakening their immune systems. Yep, they topple over. But I find it strange that, well, all of the leaves, they seem to be intact. All right. Um, Tornadoes. As wet weather remains in the forecast oh, across the Midwest, producers have some tough decisions to make when it comes to prevented decisions. planting. RFD TV As Sarah Mock has this update for the nation's capital. Millions of acres of soaked farmland prevent planting. farmers from getting RFD crops in the ground. I don't know how big that acreage capital. gets, but I think it's going to put a lot of demands of on, of on the FSA offices around the state. So, and I hope that they're up to the task. But we'll be watching that pretty carefully. FDA officials say they're prepared for an onslaught of prevented planting claims. We, we know there's going to be a, a strong push, you know, to, it's going to be needed. That's, that's the key. We, we know there's going to be a, a strong push, you know, to, it's going to be needed. That's, that's the key. Yes, it is going to be needed. And how much are the farmers going to be helped out? Uh, they certainly will not be made whole, that's for sure. So farmers that are looking at their farmland saturated or still looking at 
floods that haven't receded on their farm. A whole lot of them. A whole lot. Well, they can kiss this year goodbye. Shipping has ground to a halt goodbye. on the Mississippi and River the due to historic spring flooding. It really is a double hit a for product. farmers caught in this trade war, as Shipping we were talking about, now sitting on soybeans without a way to get them downrunner. Our Contessa flooding. Brewer joins us now really from Rock Island, for Illinois, with more on that story. War. Morning, Contessa. Hi there, Sarah. You know, I want to show you how high the water level is here on the Mississippi River. Normally, it would be six or seven feet lower there, sir, and as you, you know, can see it's almost up to the sidewalk where I'm standing this River. has receded in recent days the really bad lower, news for barges here is they were hoping to have commercial traffic up and running again on the Mississippi River but these spring storms the, really the rapid snow melt the forecast all means that the barges can't get through they have locks that are shut down at this point and some of the water is in fact so high that the river craft can't get underneath some of these bridges it's a real problem along the Mississippi Mississippi River. Uh, normally, the shipping season starts in late spring. The locks close down around oh December or so. But this spring, they weren't able to reopen. And listen, it's planting time for the farmers in the north. They're not able to get big shipments of fertilizer up through the south. And then the farmers in the north who've been sitting on, say, soybeans, hoping that they would have a more equitable trading environment, now can't get their soybeans down to New Orleans for overseas shipping. Hoping that they would have a more equitable trading environment now can't get their soybeans down to New Orleans for overseas shipping. So between the trade wars, the Mississippi closed, and all of the flooding, well, we're looking at uh, a huge percentage of independent farmers destroyed. Why do I say destroyed? Because most farmers have been really struggling for a very, very long time, not just this year or last year or two or three years ago or four years ago. They have been struggling for a very long time. And that's why you see a high percentage now of farmers killing themselves, killing themselves. Okay. What is going on? Now, I saw this, uh, all of these videos, by the way, are posted today. So May 20, 2019, a humane society in Oklahoma welcomes nearly 100 animals affected by Oklahoma flooding. 100 animals from Oklahoma flooding. Am I forgetting massive flooding in Oklahoma that just recently because occurred? Because of the storms that tore through Oklahoma, the Humane Animal Welfare Society, or HAWS, just got a little bit fuller. 100 puppies, dogs, kittens, and cats were shipped to the shelter. Those animals will soon be available. Just got a little bit fuller. 100 puppies, dogs, kittens, and cats were shipped to the shelter. Those animals will soon be available for adoption. Okay, what happened though? Um, why aren't they being reunited with their owners? I don't get this. Can anybody in Oklahoma explain uh, this? Tell us what is going on? Uh, taken from their owners and then they're put up for adoption. You know, it's interesting too. I read in the description box the Humane Animal Welfare Society of Waukesha County incorporated hmm. took in nearly 100 animals affected by flooding concerns in Oklahoma concerns not affected by the flooding in Oklahoma affected by flooding concerns so people were concerned about flooding and so they they dropped off their animals to a humane society that's going to put them up for adoption all right I'd like to understand that the her, uh, the tornadoes. Okay, you know I can't. I do spend a lot of time uh, trying to get uh, an idea of the damage from these storms. You know I do uh, researching of flooding and tornadoes, and you know what I'm seeing. Mainstream media is actually they they publish the same articles uh, 
like several times in the course of like three or four days. And those articles about are about the threat of the storms and the damage that is going to be occurring. I'm having a hard time finding the damage that has occurred. And if any of you uh, have any information on that, um, please link to it below. So here, Perry, Oklahoma, tornado damage today. Um, again, I am, I am just not seeing the kind of tornado damage that we have seen in the past. You know, tornadoes on the ground. But, and I've gotten comments from subscribers who, who live in Tornado Alley, and they say something's not quite right here in saying that these are tornadoes because they too are agreeing with me. The damage doesn't you know, quite cut it. So, high winds, okay. Um, yep. Torn uh, trees toppling over. So, I don't, I haven't and I hope that this remains true, that there's not much damage at all. So, you know, there are so many videos on these tornadoes and so many live shows on these tornadoes. You had two tornadoes back to back about a mile. Uh, there's one and there's another. Zoom in on this one. Okay, other. we've got two in tornadoes Kingfisher that are now developing. Local there's Logan a tornado. Counties. There's a tornado. Uh, what we need to do, we, we have to put the radar up just okay, so we can show who's in the path of this. Developing. But we have to keep there's these shots tornado. hot. So there's, there's a tornado. tornado. There's, a tornado. there's a tornado. Uh, two, two tornadoes happening very close to Crescent up towards Lovell. Go into your tornado shelter right now. Once again, there's a tornado and there's a tornado. Both of these are moving quickly up to the northeast at speeds of about 30 to 40 miles per there's hour. Tornado, there's a tornado, tornado right there. You can see it. Okay, this is becoming more dominant. Mark, if you can zoom in, zoom in on this right. Zoom in on the right hand side. There you go. That's a tornado right there. There you can see it. Tornado right there. You can see it. Okay, this is becoming. Okay. You guys in this area, could you please weigh in on this? Okay. Um, look at this tail that develops. You guys who have seen tornadoes in this area, are you seeing things that are that just don't quite uh, that the tornadoes are looking rather different? You know, it's interesting too, listening to these uh, meteorologists you know, they're so excited. <laughs> they get so excited. The storm chasers, my God. Oh, my God. Look, look, look. Oh, it's touching down. And, you know, people are being affected by all of this. Oh, my God. I, you know, more. The more Oklahoma tornado. Six years ago, today. Today. Killing how many children? Over 20. So this tornado outbreak, um, I'm not even going to play, you know, these videos. You can, if you want, click on the link below. Tornado outbreak hits Oklahoma and Texas, posted today. Um, again, you know, you have a, a house here and a house there and a lot of mainstream media replaying a lot of the tornadoes that were, well, that took place on Saturday. There are 1.4 million people who live in the metro area up. of Oklahoma City. Tonight Oklahoma, they are under a up. particularly dangerous situation. Watch. Major, there that means there could be some of the strongest the tornadoes that happen during the night. And that's why you got to be ready to take your, take your shelter Major, in your safe place. David Begnaud. The strongest tornadoes that happen during the night. And that's why you got to be ready to take your 
and take your shelter in your safe place. David Bego. Okay, so <laughs> yes, they can occur later on tonight. Um, so you really do need to be very alert if you do go to sleep. Keep one eye open. Now, I'm going to play this, though this guy, I'm this network, and a meteorologist Chad Myers here me, with an update on this. the severe weather, the high risk of tornadoes, um, today, these people, of hail, of wind over Chad 70 Myers or 80 miles per hour, lots of lightning. Weather. And in fact, High even flash flooding. So the bullseye is all the way across of parts of Texas, Oklahoma, of and Kansas. The center of that fact, bullseye centering anywhere from flooding. Oklahoma City so the right on down to about Wichita Falls. Texas, I'm going to take Oklahoma you hour by hour Kansas. with the radar. The 10 o'clock in the morning, just some storms popping up. City, and there's some hail right around, but this Wichita isn't Falls. the storm yet. The storm waits on the upper level energy coming out of the southwest. Cold air. Lifting air, spreading yet. out the, the atmosphere aloft, lifting these storms from the ground the up into the atmosphere Holy and making them rotate, air. making them spreading spin. The a rotating aloft. storm lifting will eventually, if it rotates long enough, put down some type of tornado making today. Them making them spin. A rotating storm will eventually, if it rotates long enough, put down some type of tornado today. All right, so... Uh, you know, you think these guys don't know about weather modification? They of course do. Of course they do. They just never mention it. I want to bring it to your attention. Oh, uh, what is this? Techniques specified in section uh, 3 or 4 can be used to move two air masses in opposite directions or in the same direction but at a different speed these air masses are offset by a small distance. This process will create a whirlwind or a small tornado. The whirlwind or tornado strength can be increased. What is this? Weather modification by artificial satellite. Artificial satellite. So when we see all of the signatures of these frequencies. And you listen to these meteorologists and they're talking about these air masses and you know full well they can move the air mass, they can move the jet stream, they can create tornadoes. In fact, I want you to see a picture uh, pictures that I took in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, an area that is not known for tornadoes. This was July 7, 2011. Oh, 2011, when we had an awful lot of tornadoes and flooding. I come out of my house and I see in one direction, I'm like, oh my God, you know, all of the chemtrailing and, and crap. I get in my car and I go in another direction and I immediately pulled over. Voila, this is what I see. A tornado. Cloud. No tornado. This is just there, right? Okay. Uh, they can create things that look like tornadoes, uh, artificial tornado cloud. And then they can create the winds. Okay. And I have to tell you, people are just walking by. They're not looking. I'm snapping you know, the camera. Um, nobody is even paying attention. And I show this you know, to my friends, and they're like, oh, well, big deal. Big deal? It's a very big deal. You know, we have a tornado cloud in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, that begins to just uh, fade away. It literally just began to diffuse into, like, a, a gas. This gaseous mess was left behind. Please. Okay. Um, 
Oh, and oh, yeah, it turned a dark gray. This is our life today. This is our life today. I want you to see this. Abilene, Texas. Uh, 5-18-2019. That's lightning? No, it's not lightning. You know, the artificial clouds that they create can create electrical charges within the cloud and they erupt like this. So, yeah, lighting up the sky. And Abilene was one of the areas of Texas that had flooding and tornadoes. Yeah, I mean, when you see this, you would think everybody in Abilene would go, what? What the hell is going on? Weather modification. A war. A war is going on. And most are happy to ignore it. Ignore it. So, yeah, you can check out 44 minutes of tornado chasing. Uh, yeah.